Slide that fucking whistle! Uh. Oh, damn. Sorry sorry that I didn't realize how long it was going to take to uh, uh, set up my noodler bit. I, I sort of went thorn, uh, I, uh, like your water shit down. No, yeah. I, I, I feel like I could have, like, I was like, oh, shit, should I talk about the, the I wasn't sure what graphic detail I should discuss the date. Well, no, so no, 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 I was, I was trying to have, like, a, a just a, a fun conversation that could fill until it, it didn't need to, and then Brian keeps, like, looking to the exit like we're about to make, like, you know, a big <laughs> daring escape. Well, well, because, uh, specifically the because show? I be yeah, we're in the after show. Okay. So, 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 uh, this just to broadcast. This is where we can say yeah, we're, still, we're, still, we're, still, we're still live. Oh, yeah. never mind then. Uh, so I, I became increasingly convinced that that uh, uh, that Matt was just just uh, like sight lines were lined up and he was right there waiting to come in. And I was like, oh, maybe he's waiting no. for uh, uh -huh. a, 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 you know a, a setup or whatever. And 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 so I panicked and I I, I went darn. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't find that book. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fucking ironic. I know. You think I know the exactly book where you book. find things? <laughs> oh, no. And yet, oh, here we are. Says, uh, he opens up the book, oh, and it's a picture of the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I packed it in a oh. different spot than I thought I did. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Ready for the road. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Heaton, did you hit or not? Like, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it was great. It was yeah. terrific. I'll go back to birth any time. It was terrific. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I got laid through being a tour guide. This is the only time this has happened in the last, like, five years. So, uh, but, wait, 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 I, I was laid? on Tinder, and the person was like, I've never been to Edinburgh. Before. The lady was like, I've never been to Edinburgh before. I'm looking for a tour guide. And I went, just so happens, I have been a tour guide. I could take you on a date and tell you about Edinburgh. And we did just that, and tours kept forming around me where, like, old people would be like, are we on a tour? And I'd be like, we're on a date, but you can stick but around here. Yeah. But when yeah. I leave, it's it's you can't totally come. True. Yeah. Because you well, plan to. You can do whatever you'd like. <laughs> 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 All right, that's, that's my cue to go get a beer. Does anyone need something? Uh, no, I'm good. one. Okay. I'll take a beer. Uh, yeah. Well, now we're just like have this awkward distance. Now that uh, I kind of like Heaton's it. talked, you know what? I, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to organize the furniture in my apartment, and I figured out that I, I've got the like I have a couch, thank you, yeah, and I have a chair, thanks, <laughs> and it's it's about this distance, and it's really really weird. Like, oh, like imagine you're... me and Richard just talking like this <laughs> when he comes over to visit me. I oh. one, I, I, so I, I one time when I was traveling for business, uh, had this gig in the fancy hotel in New York City. And so mm. it had been the first time that I'd been in New York in a while. And so no bunch of people there. So I was like, hey, I got this like rad room, like this rad, like, like sweet kind of area. It's got like a living room and everything. Uh, uh, why don't you guys come on up? And so like, like two or three different groups of people came up to hang out with me in the hotel and then I realized that the only place that I could sit and talk with them was like at a two and two almost boardroom style table so I was just like looking at them while like like I yeah. was like advertising like, you know they were like like interviewing for a job or something like that oh I broke into a hotel room one time and left a, a skeleton in it can I tell you about that uh no okay. uh, Brian is doing his sommelier uh, routine with the beers that he's offering Turns out no, I'm, I'm nothing gonna, was to I'm my taste. Anyway, I, 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 was, I, was in, I was in New York a few years ago, and I was hanging out with a couple of uh, journalist buddies, and for whatever reason, they had like a Halloween skeleton, and one of their friends was visiting New York and was convinced he was going to get laid. We didn't like that guy, so we were going to put the skeleton <laughs> in his hotel room. Uh, now, the, the problem is none of us had a key to the hotel room. That's a problem, right? So one of us, who I think might be a sociopath, and it wasn't me, what he did is he went to the, the desk and he went, hi, I've been locked out of my room. I'm in 220. Can you let me in? And they were like, uh, do you have an ID? And he went, what's in the room? And they went, yeah. okay. And then they let him into the room. He, as, they're, as, they, as they walk in, he pulls his wallet out of his back pocket got off a chair and goes, here it is, flashes his ID, and they go, have a good oh, evening, sir. Wow. And then we just left the skeleton in the bed and put a bunch of condoms on it and left. <laughs> wait, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did, were you, like, trailing the skeleton behind you <laughs> no, as no. they were leaving we were, you We were, like, room? giggling at that, like, you know that area with the shitty ice machine in the hotel? Yeah. We're in there going, like, tee-hee. <laughs> we got a skeleton. <laughs> I never would have loved it if you show up with a skeleton over your shoulder and you're like, like get like out of my room. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Oh, but he's nerfing. I'm definitely, I'm definitely not having sex with this thing in someone else's room. 
Why did that bring the house down? Why did that kill the energy with that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mainly because uh, about midway through you talking, I realized that I had laughed at the end of the thing, but it missed the bulk of the story. And I thought to myself, am I the asshole who shows up at the very end punchline of a joke and laughs not knowing what it was? <laughs> and I realized it was. And then, so I couldn't I trust your... If you didn't you laugh, trust your friends. That's all that means. Don't beat yourself up. If you, if you didn't laugh, it's because you wanted to fuck the skeleton in someone else's hotel room. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, That's, that's true. on you. I, like, maybe, like, if you're ever doing work on your house... Like if you're doing work in the basement, or if, if there's a section, leave leave a plastic skeleton down there because it'll take 20, 30 years for them to find it, and it'll be fun. Like <laughs> if you ever sell your house, they're gonna find that eventually. Like, that'll be a fun day for them. Uh, either that, or like a uh, what appears to be like a treasure chest <laughs> <laughs> filled with what looks like gold doubloons. I remember uh, I was a stage manager uh, for the show Fifty Shades the parody. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like there is. A, I don't know enough about the backstory, but you definitely just like just changed the parody. Like, like, oh, like, I know. Like, as fast as you could possibly say. I'm it. from New Jersey, <laughs> where if you know very familiar something, it becomes one word. Yeah. So you get like a bacon and cheese sandwich. You so, get salt pepper so, ketchup on that sandwich. Jerbs. I went so, to Red so, Bank Regional High School. So for uh, uh, for the uninitiated, what is this show? Fifty Shades. The parody was a parody musical. The parody musical. That successfully survived the lawsuits of Fifty Shades <laughs> <laughs> to go on to oh, tour and I did find not homes. know about that. Yes, yes, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I, I was the stage manager for, uh, for that show. It's and um, it was very low budget, so much so that basically my way of uh, texting, uh, my, my way of communicating backstage was through text messages of the cast. Yeah. Well, then a personal situation popped up where, every, you know, everybody gets caught on different group texts, right? Yep. Yeah. So. Someone wasn't aware that the star of the show was on a group text. Oh. And they talked shit about the star Wild shit of the show. About the star. Oh. While while uh while the episode was happening. And so so suddenly it was on me to go mission impossible. And and and, and, and Angela Lansbury take it okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't know. I'm faster than her. <laughs> and I think that's the end of the list of people. By the way, wait a minute. Hold on. Is she still alive? Because no. the last time I checked, she was still alive. Yeah. No, she's one of those. I, look I, look, I, look I, her up. I, I think I'm she might be still alive. She I, dies, I, I, everybody's going to go like, she, it's like when Shirley Temple died. Everybody for game theory, like, I'm going to say no. Uh, she's alive. She's totally alive. I mean, her nice. Wikipedia. Uh, she is. Uh, age Whoa. 95. 95 yeah. Years old. Asian. Still, still spry enough to run for president. Uh, <laughs> if she dies this week, this episode has to be deleted. So wait a minute. All right. So so uh, j just to get back to the story. Yeah. So uh, uh, you are communicating during the show. So the show is happening. Yeah. Show's happening. Somebody is talking shit about the star who is on stage. On stage. Okay. So now it is your job. Yes. To go back and delete these messages. See if I can find his phone. Yes. Unlock See if I can get his into phone it. Yeah. And delete it. How to go. Um, I was successful in locating his phone in the dressing room. Okay. Uh, I was unsuccessful trying to figure out his passcode. Anyway, <laughs> this all leads to Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put it under a <laughs> put it under a handkerchief <laughs> and step on it and say, "Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it." Backstage, Clydesdales running wild. <laughs> the only the only bit of uh, harm was your phone. They, Jesus. Uh, there was a successful solution to this problem, and I did not come up with it. What was it? And uh, it was, and I don't know whose idea it was. But it was brilliant. Everyone uh, looking out for the person who absolutely tweeted. All of just added it. added yeah just oh, buried it so under a hundred. noise, of course. So he came off stage to a hundred text messages and was like, "What the fuck was happening?" To yeah. the show? Oh, oh, we were just, just we were just being silly. We somebody somebody made a game. Yeah. That's brilliant. holy shit. That's so. hilarious. Uh, did he ever find out? Or no, was, was, did, it was a successful caper. That's pretty did good. Nobody call him an asshole to his face like uh, <laughs> like ever or uh, well as stage manager I definitely did a few yeah. times <laughs> but uh, yeah and you want to know what you son it, of a bitch it, we yeah. they hit the, you from a group chat from if yourself. the text if the text was for me I would have been like leave it <laughs> <laughs> 
I stand by it. I'm willing to take this argument face to face. No problem. Uh, so, so uh, it's a single show that's still touring the Fifty Shades, or are there I don't multiple know if it's still touring instances? now. There was well, multiple. probably not during COVID. <laughs> not not during thought. COVID. It wasn't like yeah. there's one to risk it for. <laughs> yeah, they, they, were, the they were the only show that kept going. The one show. <laughs> that yeah, kept finally, going. a Fifty Shades parody for MAGA patriots that <laughs> are overturning <laughs> Doctor Fakey's orders. Christian Gray believes in binding, but no masks. <laughs> Supported by the pillow guy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh. Mike Lindell produces. <laughs> Mike Lindell, I don't make love, I fuck. <laughs> <laughs> when you need a pillow for bondage, yeah. you know that you need to get a my pillow. <laughs> Please. Dominion voting machines have corrupted this country, but you can corrupt the slot of your choice with this my pillow. My safe word is stop the steal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Ma Mike Liddell sounds like Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> I tell you what, Mean Gene, my pillows are the most comfortable in the world. Snap it to a slim gym with my pillow. <laughs> pillow brother. <laughs> but coffee well, in the you know when Biden, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Biden made the call to Fauci. Yeah. yeah. Said release the virus. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, the Wuhan gets on out there. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Not going to fool the Mike Lindell man. No. I just want to keep watching. I, man, all three of us pull up chairs. I will watch a full one man show of Mike Lindell. As Mike Lindell. Sleeper Fringe Festival like, hit. Like, people ask me why I'm obsessed with pillows. Yeah. And I think of my father. I have two, two things in life that I care about. Oh, yeah. 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 Be you know the, the, the sleep that you have each and every night? Yeah. Yeah. And then the <laughs> Dominion voting machine switching the votes in the middle of the night. Why was Donald Trump winning? And then he wasn't. Yeah. yeah. That's what you gotta ask. <laughs> Sydney oh. Powell's a smart lady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one expected this Edinburgh show to go right to the top. Yeah. <laughs> Best of fest. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was the show went uh, it went off Broadway and then it toured and then it, was, it went to Vegas for two years and then it closed. I don't know if there's any live companies of it now. Oh, but, well, uh, there should be. <laughs> but if you got, oh, yeah. if there are any investors out there, <laughs> if anybody wants a percentage of the relaunch <laughs> of the parody of the book that no one reads anymore, <laughs> well, we yeah, dude, that. that uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess it, it ran the whole. It, it went from uh, uh, knockoff fan fiction to legitimate fan fiction to ebook phenomenon yes. to legitimate mm -hmm. book phenomenon to option movie to made trilogy. Uh, after that, it, it's it now God's reading it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I say, and he's really horny. <laughs> if God's got he's a like, big oh, I'm gonna go butter. build another planet. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> kill another planet. <laughs> yeah, he's got uh, one Earth isn't enough for me. <laughs> I need multiples. I have doubles of the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> he did start his uh, uh, fan fiction for um, Twilight. For Twilight, Twilight. yeah, Twilight. that's right. Yeah. Like uh, and then, and then they, they, they replaced uh, the bizarre culture of vampires with largesse. Bondage? Yeah. <laughs> like, Photography, yeah. I believe. Question Photography? Mark. Was Bondage? that it? Is that the thing? Everything I know about that entire series came from uh, the parody, uh, yeah. which, which is, I feel like I know a lot now. <laughs> I actually, the joke I had, was, I, which I'm glad I said after the lawsuit, oh, yeah. um, was that it wasn't Fifty Shades the parody. It was just Fifty Shades <laughs> the musical. Like anything that was funny in it was just from the book. Right. So singing yeah. the facts of the book made people be like, what? And so, yeah, uh, when, when Christian Grey sang, uh, I don't make love, I fuck, that's right from the book. Uh, yeah. so, so, in other words, you were taking the two life crew defense. Yes. Where it's yeah. like, no, it's funny. I'm so bad at singing Pretty Woman that, that, that I should not have to pay royalties. There, for was, it. there was a moment. When uh, uh, we did the Diamond Club book, which was obviously yeah. also in, in in the wake of that, and uh, uh, on the media, to this moment, the most legitimate appearance that I have made as a guest in in my life was on the media for NPR, and uh, I'm in this fancy ass NPR studio, and I have like the like 
full sound that's coming in from wherever they're producing on the media and they start playing a clip and i assume it is from our audiobook yeah. our terrible audiobook because it is so shittily written it is just yeah. like you know the most random nonsense you could ever read and also like and this is a credit to the the uh, uh diamond club member who read the book yeah like it sounded like her uh, but it was the actual professional audiobook reading of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> and so, like, I was, like, smiling, and I'm about to almost, like, cut off the intro to be like, like, that's great, right? Like, that's great, <laughs> awful writing. I bet you can't even tell the difference between that and Fifty Shades of Grey. Exactly. And in the moment, I almost did that, and then she was like, that's Fifty Shades of Grey. Like, I'm like, well... <laughs> Good stay away. <laughs> yeah. Good, Good eye. Good eye. Good eye. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite thing is that, like, if you're trying to get into the psyche of uh, the the fantasy aspect of it, at one point he makes her eat like a bunch of delicious food all the time. That's one of the plot points. Oh, oh like forcing really? her. It's like, yeah, you must have like the most succulent meals. I must. I need you because I'm going to burn so many calories with our outrageous sex. You need here's, to. Here's how fucked to, up I am. I, we just finished watching Hannibal, and I thought it was the Hannibal thing where they he made her eat snails so she would taste better. <laughs> yeah, it's not she that. would taste better. Yeah, he was going to eat her. Oh, because he was going to eat her. Because he's a Hannibal. Like physically eat her. Yeah, he was going to yeah, yeah. not yeah. sexually eat her. Not, not the, sexually. Not the fun well, way. Yeah, probably not that version of Hannibal Lecter. I missed Paul's idea. It's Hannibal Lecter, more like. What's that? I don't know. It's just a perfect idea. Scrolling back up. Uh, we're about Paul, to find Paul, out. by the way, played Christian Grey in Fifty Shades of the Parody. Yeah, that was the first time that uh, I ever saw him. <laughs> a cup of coffee before bedtime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, this must be fucking torture for you. Oh, baby. my God. I know. <laughs> no one loves talking like Macho Man Randy Savage all day long. <laughs> No one knows more catchphrases of Macho Man, and then he knows everything about wrestling. And you're sitting in fucking Pittsburgh. <laughs> but to be, fair, to be fair, this is the only time I could get my Macho Man up. Like I would do one line of Macho Man, and then all of a sudden the fucking fog would roll in of the best Macho Man fucking just ever. Ball in a wrecking ball. Just bra and I just would have sat there like a like a Go like ahead. a '50s like a, a Bobby Soxer like on my belly, watching it in delight. <laughs> uh, can I? Uh, he hello, Paul. I want to say hi. Uh, I, went, I, went to, uh, <laughs> I went to a wedding in Pittsburgh a couple of years ago. And my favorite thing about it was literally every every man I spoke to for the entire time I was in Pittsburgh began every conversation like this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> literally every man in Pittsburgh always prefaced everything with "Okay," <laughs> and I was like, "What?" Like I thought it was delightful. That was wonderful. <laughs> Like everybody's constantly going, enough is enough. Time for me to fix this shit. Yeah. All right. A lot of crowd control in the Berg. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> shit is always popping off. <laughs> <sighs> that, I have family in Pittsburgh, and uh, one of their claims to fame, when uh, uh, we had taken a family trip, there was a, uh, a wedding that ended in such a uh, uh, fight, physically, a physical fight. Jesus. Uh, that it was technically classified as a riot, and they were bragging about how many townships police had to show up from. <laughs> wow. And that's the only way uh, a marriage is considered valid in Pittsburgh. That's it, yeah. <laughs> and, and at some point, a presiding officer comes by and says, All right! Hey. <laughs> hey. Officer, I'm monogamous! <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I, see you got a, I see Yin's got a ring on your finger. Yeah. Yin's. <laughs> but did you have any cops at your wedding? Yeah. <laughs> Want to get a bowl of soup? <laughs> oh, man. Uh... I think, I think, I think, yeah, where are we at? Yeah, very good. Very good. That, that, that's three hours. Uh, uh, all right. Right. Thank you so much, Andrew so, Heaton. Uh, uh, Heaton. My pleasure. Thank you, for Donnelly. That. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you to Brett. Thank you to Darren. Uh, uh, if you are in the Austin area and you have signed up, there is a very awesome show that is happening locally, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, we will have some version of that out somewhere soon. But until then, great night. 
Great night, motherfuckers. Great night. Huzzah. Great night, motherfuckers. Beautiful boys. Beautiful boys. Beautiful boys. Beautiful boys. Woo! <laughs> 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 All right.